Drawing Out the Facts, the Naked Science Scrapbook. Hello and welcome to the Naked Science Scrapbook from the Naked Scientists. This time we're answering the question, what is jet lag? If you've ever been on a long-haul flight to a dream destination only to find yourself falling asleep midway through the next day or awake and raring to go in the middle of the night, you've experienced jet lag. But why does it happen? The reason is that animals, plants and even bacteria have body clocks. These are chemical chronometers that tick away inside cells, allowing tissues, organs and whole organisms to keep track of time and adjust their behaviour and biochemical activities accordingly. So we feel tired at bedtime, nocturnal species nap during the day and plants do most of their growing at night. And by constantly knowing the time, cells can put themselves into just the right chemical state to be perfectly prepared for each situation. In humans, this clockwork takes the form of a genetic domino effect, where one gene turns on and the product of that gene switches on another gene, which in turn switches on a further gene and also switches off the first gene and so on. Scientists have also shown recently that human red blood cells, despite lacking a nucleus, meaning they have no DNA and therefore no genes to turn on or off, can nonetheless keep time too. The clockwork in their case, though, isn't a genetic one, but instead cycles of chemical signals circulating in the cells. But regardless of how it works, the bottom line is that every cell in the body almost certainly has its own internal clock and can tell the time. And because these genetic and chemical cycles take about 24 hours, they're referred to as circadian clocks. This comes from the Latin words circa, meaning around, and dies, meaning a day. But how are all these clocks set and synchronised and then reset when we change time zones? The answer is that the brain contains a master clock called the suprachiasmatic nucleus, whose job it is to work like a pacemaker, setting all of the slave clocks running in the tissues. The suprachiasmatic nucleus is made up of a small cluster of about 20,000 interconnected nerve cells in the brain's hypothalamus. These nerve cells transmit their own clock signals to other parts of the brain to control behaviour. And by altering the levels of the hormones cortisol and melatonin, which are produced by the brain's pituitary and pineal glands, the sync signals are sent to all of the other cells in the body via the bloodstream. But how does the suprachiasmatic nucleus itself keep time? This is down to light. As well as the rods and cones that we use for seeing, the retina in the eye also contains a small population of specialised light sensors called intrinsically photosensitive ganglion cells. These cells don't actually enable us to consciously see anything. Instead, they contain a chemical called melanopsin, which is sensitive to blue light, so during the daytime these cells become more active. They're connected via the optic nerve to the suprachiasmatic nucleus, which then uses these light signals to sync itself to the Earth's 24-hour day-night cycle. So what does all this have to do with jet lag? Say you're flying from London to Los Angeles and you touch down at 4pm. The local time in LA is eight hours behind that in London, meaning that your body's clocks think it's actually midnight. Your cells and biochemical processes are busy preparing themselves for sleep and you feel a strong urge to bed down for the night. So you succumb to the feelings of fatigue and take a nap. But then at 10pm local time, when you really should be going to sleep, your body clock has ticked around to 6am London time and your suprachiasmatic nucleus is now sounding its internal alarm clock, sending surges of wake-up signals through the nervous system and the bloodstream, leaving late-night hotel TV and the minibar as the only options. Luckily, thanks to your intrinsically photosensitive retinal ganglion cells, when you venture outside into the bright LA sunshine the next day, your suprachiasmatic nucleus begins to adjust, slowly shifting your clock cycle to fit the new time zone. As a general rule of thumb, body clock biologists suggest that it takes about one day per time zone that you've crossed to fully reset your clock. In the meantime, you have to suffer the consequences of your cells and tissues being metabolically ill-prepared for the day ahead. Now, this isn't much fun if you're on holiday or on a business trip, but it's really bad news if you're the pilot that then has to fly back to London the next day or on to another time zone. 
This is because long-term disruptions to the body clock caused by repeatedly switching time zones or by shift work have been linked to reduced performance, higher accident rates and a higher risk of heart disease and some cancers. So is there any way around jet lag? Well, given the importance of light in regulating our circadian rhythm, getting the right amount of light at the right time in your new time zone can help you adjust as rapidly as possible. Setting your watch to the time at your destination when you get on the plane and trying to sleep accordingly can also help. Pharmaceutical treatments like melatonin supplements are available, but the effects can be variable. Or you could try Viagra. In 2007, a group of researchers reported that dosing jet-lagged hamsters with the active chemical in Viagra reduced their re-entrainment time. This effect is still yet to be trialled in human subjects, though, so maybe avoid the uh, other effects of Viagra and stick to resetting your watch on the plane. That's it for this time. To get the answers to more science questions, join us online at thenakedscientist.com forward slash scrapbook. Bye!